just three more exam questions that we're going to do. This one's pretty straightforward. So we have this curve here and we want to find out the first and second derivatives. So dy by dx is just going to be equal to 12x cubed minus 24x squared. Simple for the first bit. The second derivative, I'm just going to differentiate this again. So I'm going to get 36x squared minus 48x. Then what it wants me to do for part B is to verify that it has a stationary point when x equals 2. If it says verify, that means you can use this information. If it said show that, you wouldn't be able to do this. But for verify, I can just substitute in x equals 2. For a stationary point, dy by dx equals 0 if it is stationary. So when x equals 2, dy by dx is equal to 12 times 2 cubed minus 24 times 2 squared. So 12 times 2 cubed minus 24 times 2 squared is 0. Hence, C has a stationary point when x equals 2. And then it says to determine the nature of this stationary point, giving a reason for your answer. So we're going to find out what the second derivative is when x is equal to 2. So it'll be 36 times 2 squared minus 48 times 2. So that's 36 times 2 squared minus 48 times 2 which is 48, which is clearly bigger than 0. So because the second derivative is greater than 0, this is a minimum point. So let's check our answers for this. We've got the 12x cubed minus 24x squared two marks for that, and then your 36x squared minus 48x. So one mark for subbing in, the second one for saying that it's equal to zero, and you have to say that there is a stationary point. You do actually have to say this sentence here. Then we sub x equals two into this one, which we did, and we get 48 is greater than zero, hence the stationary point is a minimum. So you need to say that it is a minimum point there. Pretty straightforward. This is where these questions are a little bit more involved. So you might want to pause and have a go at this one, but we're talking about the plan view, so the bird's eye view of a swimming pool. The shape of the pool A, B, C, D, E, A consists of a rectangular section and a semicircular section, which is what we can see there. And they've told us that the area of the pool is 250 metres squared. So that is the fixed constraint that we have here. So I'm actually going to do some calculations with that. So we know that the area is equal to the rectangle at the top, which is going to be 2xy, and then the bit at the bottom. Well, the radius of this, of this circle is just from here to here for the semicircle, which is just going to be x. So it's going to be pi r squared or pi x squared, but it's a half of it because it's a semicircle like this. Now they've told us that the area is 250. So 250 equals 2xy plus a half pi x squared. And we're eventually going to want this thing here to be only in terms of x. So I'm going to want to eliminate y. So I'm going to make y the subject. So I would have 250 minus a half pi x squared all divided by 2x is equal to y. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with an expression for the perimeter using x and y. So for the perimeter, we're going to have 2x plus 2y plus a semicircle. So that is 2x plus 2y plus a semicircle. Well, a semicircle is normally 2 pi r, so it would be Sorry, uh, uh, the full circle would be 2 pi x, but because it's a semicircle, we're going to half that because we only want half of it. OK, so all we're going to do now is we're just going to substitute it in what y is equal to. So p equals 2x plus 2y. So it's going to be 2 lots of 250 minus a half pi x squared all divided by 2x. Got a bit extreme there with my fraction line. That's my 2y, and I also have pi x. So I'm going to just keep trying to make it look like the thing that they've got for us. So the 2x, I'm actually not going to do anything to the 2x because it's just happy like staying there by itself. 
So I'm going to spot that I can do this too, cancelling with this too, because effectively this one is in the numerator and the other one's in the denominator, so they cancel. So I just have 250 over x minus a half pi x squared over x plus pi x. And you can notice I've just split this fraction into two because they have a common denominator. So I get 2x plus 250x, which is great. The x here and the x here cancel, so I've got minus a half pi x plus pi x, that's minus a half plus one, which is just going to be plus a half pi x. Now a half pi x is pi x over two, I just wanted to make it look exactly like their one that they've got there. Now I think that's an awful lot of work for four marks, but we've already got down to what they were looking there for, for the expression. So we started it up here and we've come all the way down to this bit. Now we've got a weird question, it says explain why x has to be between 0 and 500 over pi square rooted. Well, let's just think about this for a second. If we're talking about a swimming pool and we're talking about these lengths that we've got here, there are certain restrictions that we know for 2x and for y if they're lengths. If they're measuring a length, they've always got to be positive, otherwise we're no longer talking about a swimming pool. So we're going to try and use those investigations that we've got, okay? We want 2x to be greater than 0 or y to be greater than 0. Well, we don't really have much information about x, but we do have this information here about y. So I'm going to make that thing be greater than 0. So I want y to be greater than zero because it's a length. And if y is greater than zero, you'll notice that um, x would also have to be greater than zero as well. So we're going to have 250 minus half pi x squared all over 2x has got to be greater than zero. So I can multiply by the 2x. So I've just got 250 minus a half pi x squared has got to be greater than zero. And then we're just going to quickly solve this quadratic that we've got here. So it's going to be a negative quadratic. I'm going to just quickly put on my calculator for what the solutions are. I think it's going to be, actually, I could just do this one without the calculator, silly me. So we've got a half pi x squared equals 250. And so x squared is going to be 500 over pi. And so x is equal to plus or minus 500 over pi. So the two places would be here and here. And we want the values of it to be greater than zero. So it looks like y would be greater than zero when x is in between these values. So it looks like we're saying that x is going to be in between minus root 500 over pi and root 500 over pi. However, do you remember what we said at the beginning of the question? We said that not only does y have to be greater than zero, but x has to be greater than zero, which means we're not going to want that bit there. Instead, we're going to want it as a zero. So the dimensions are going to be, sorry, not the dimensions, but the restrictions are going to be that x has got to be between 0 and 500 over pi. Pretty sneaky thing for just two marks there. Then we want to find the minimum perimeter of the pool, giving your answer to three significant figures. So we kind of come back with what the question is really wanting for us to do. Let's add in an extra page for this. So we're going to continue from where we left off, which was with this bit I've just put the star next to. So if p equals 2x plus, I'm just going to write this in index form, so that's 250x to the minus 1, and I'm going to write this as a half pi x. I just kind of like having the coefficient of x a bit separate. I'm going to differentiate it to get dp dx, which is going to be 2 minus 250x to the minus 2 plus a half pi Oops, we don't need the x there, do we? Just checking that's what I'd had from earlier. Good. And we're going to make it equal to 0. So dp dx is equal to 0. In other words, I'm going to just skip a little bit of the stage here. That's 250x squared, I've added that to the left-hand side, is equal to 2 plus a half pi. So when I solve this, I'll get 250 divided by 2 plus a half pi square rooted is equal to x. And then I'm going to substitute that into my value of p, my, uh, my formula for p, sorry. So let's do 250 divided by 2 plus a half pi. I'm going to square root that answer to find out what x is. So x is 8.367, but I'm going to just leave it in my calculator. And I'm now going to sub it straight in 
So I've got my 8.376, I'm going to do 2 of the answer, plus 250 answer minus 1, which is divided by the answer, plus a half pi multiplied by the answer. So the perimeter that we've got is 59.8, because I think it wanted it to three significant figures. So the minimum perimeter is 59.8 meters to three significant figures. Now we don't need to show that it is a minimum because it didn't say that. It didn't say show that this is a minimum. So we can just leave it at this point here. Let's check we got this all right. Well, we know we got the first bit right because we got to that answer. This bit is what we had here because X and Y both had to be greater than zero. And then for that last bit, we did get 59.8 for this bit. And you can check through the mark scheme if you want to see where those marks get awarded. OK, we're just going to do one last question. And I like these ones because they kind of pull together lots of different ideas. So this one, we've got this kind of shape on the right hand side, this 3D solid. And they kindly tell you that the sphere of radius R, you have a volume of 4 over 3 pi R cubed. And for a sphere, the air surface area of the sphere is 4 pi R squared. Because we're going to need that in the question. So a manufacturer produces a storage tank. The tank is modelled in the shape of a hollow circular cylinder closed at one end with a hemispherical shell at the other end as shown in figure nine. So this is completely closed. There's no open ends to this one. The walls of the tank are assumed to have negligible thickness, meaning that they're just really, really thin. The, the cylinder has radius R meters and height H meters and the hemisphere has radius R meters. The volume of the tank is six meters cubed. So we've already got our constraint that these questions always give us. Show that according to the model, the surface area of the tank in meters squared is given by, they haven't put this in, but I'm going to say A equals 12 over R plus 5 over 3 pi R squared. So we know how to do this. We are going to deal with the constraint first. So they've told us that the volume is 6 meters cubed. And we know that the volume is going to be the volume of the cylinder, first of all, which is pi R squared H. And we're going to add in the volume of the hemisphere. Now, the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. So if it's half of that, half of four thirds is two thirds pi r cubed. And we know that this thing is equal to six. So we have six pi r squared h plus two thirds pi r cubed. And you'll notice here, this one has got no H values in it, so we're going to make H the subject. Now, when we make H the subject, we're going to have 6 minus 2 thirds pi R cubed divided by pi R squared is equal to H. And now we're going to come up with the expression for the surface area. So for the surface area, I don't need the S, I'm just going to go with A here. We're going to have the surface area of the top part, which is this bit here. And that's just going to be half of the whole sphere. So it's going to be 2 pi r squared. And then the bottom bit, if you imagine kind of slicing it down there and unwinding it, it would be the circumference multiplied by h for that rectangle. So it would be 2 pi r h. All I'm going to do now is take this and sub it into a. So we get 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r multiplied by 6 minus 2 thirds pi r cubed divided by pi r squared. And I'm going to do some of those tricks with cancelling. So the pi here in the numerator can cancel with this. The r in the numerator can cancel with the squared. And we get 2 pi r squared plus I'm going to multiply out the 2 now. So I'm going to have 2 times the 6, which is 12 minus two times two thirds, that's four thirds pi r cubed. Don't forget that we've still got the r in the denominator. So when I split this, I'm going to have 12 over r, and I'm going to have minus four over three pi r cubed divided by r is just going to be r squared. So look at what we've got here. This pi r squared, and this is a pi r squared, I can simplify that. So I'm just going to do 2 minus 4 over 3, which is 2 over 3. So we've got 2 over 3 pi r squared plus 12 over r. Is that what we wanted? Oh, no, we've got 5 over 3. Where have I made a mistake in this bit now? Ah, 
I see what I've forgotten. I'm hoping you might have told me this. I did earlier, I did for the area, I did this bit. I did this bit. I forgot about the circle on the bottom. So what I need to do is I need to go back here and I need to add on a pi r squared as well. So I all this time should have had an extra pi r squared for the circle that's on the bottom. And when I add a pi r squared to this bit, I've actually got, let's do the 2 thirds pi r squared and the pi r squared. So I'm just going to add 1 to that and we do get 5 thirds. So easy to make a mistake like that and that's why it's nice they give you the answer. So we have 5 thirds pi r squared plus 12 over r. Which is the same as this, don't need to rewrite that. The manufacturer needs to minimise the surface area. So we're going to use calculus to find the radius for which the surface area is a minimum. So we're going to do DADR, make it equal zero, and then we'll find out what R is. And then we want to find out the minimum surface area. So we're going to find out what the area is equal to for that last bit. So that is part A done. That was a lot of work for part A, and it was only for four marks. We're now going to do part B. Remember, you could do part B even if you didn't do part A. So we get that DADR, I'm going to do 5 over 3 pi times 2, so that's 10 over 3 pi r. Remember that 12 over r, that's 12 r to the minus 1. It's going to be minus 12 r to the minus 2. So when I solve this equation, I'm going to say that it's equal to 0. So DADR is equal to 0. So that means that 10 over 3 pi r is equal to 12 over r squared. So I'm going to just do some move, moving around here. I'm going to multiply up by the r squared. I'm going to do the 12 times 3, which is 36. I'm going to divide it by the 10 and the pi. So I'm going to do 36 divided by 10 pi. And I'm going to cube root that answer. Don't need it in its exact form. So we get 1.04644, blah, blah, blah. Check if it's got any constraints doesn't say what we need for the constraints there so I'm just going to do three significant figures and the units for this question are in meters and that's that part done and then we'll just do part C which is to find the area so for the C part of the question I'm just going to stub R equals the one that I've got on my calculator into the expression for the area so it's 5 over 3 pi r cubed, pi r squared, excuse me. So it's going to be 5 over 3 pi answer squared plus 12 over the answer. And we get the answer at 17.2. And it wanted that to the nearest integer. So 17.2 is 17 meters squared. And that is to the nearest integer. Let's check we got all of this right, seeing as I made a mistake earlier on, we want to make sure we get it all correct. So we did know we got that bit right, because we actually came up with that. Um, we get 1.046 for this bit, we did 1.05, but it's going to be the same thing, and then 17 meters squared for that last bit. So that is everything that you need for chapter 12 on differentiation. Obviously, we come back to it again in year two, but these are all the really important ideas, and they love these kind of diagram -y questions in the exam.